Well, I'm on my way to my last ever lecture. I'm walking today because I walked to my first lecture in first year, so I'll walk to my last. The end of university is something that I've been conscious of for quite a long time. But this particular event, the end of lectures, is not something that I ever gave much thought, and now it's suddenly here. But it's, I think it's a big day, it's a, it's a defining moment in my life because this is like the end of my formal education. Obviously I'll go on learning things, but never again will I sit in a classroom or a lecture theatre because it's part of my course. Of course I could take up some extra course later, maybe I could even do a master's in a couple of years. But this, this run of education that I've been, been going through since, basically since I was born, is is now coming to an end and this is one of those big moments. Lectures end at the end of every term but it's it's usually like a, a happy occasion because you're like yay no more lectures for however many weeks. But this time it's forever. So it's an odd mix of emotions and a slightly scary thought that I'm never gonna be learning stuff in this way again. From now it's up to me to learn things. my way here so far, it's been cold and cloudy, hot and sunny, and it's rained. The weather is crazy again. This is not the last time that I'll be at the computer lab. I'll be coming back for supervision on Friday. Our exams aren't in the computer lab this year, so I won't be back for those. And that's it, lectures are over. I've had lunch and I've got a supervision now. I don't know how many more supervisions I've got left exactly, but this won't be the last. I've probably got two or three more after this. Taking the lift up to the supervision, because I hurt my knee this morning. This is the slowest lift I've ever seen. That's gonna fly and I'll like fall into the river. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs>
Look how cute they are. We're going to get pizza for dinner today and we're actually going to Pizza Hut instead of ordering. I'm on hold with an airline, trying to figure out how we can get back from Malia after we've booked flights to get there. We want to go via Athens and I know which flights I want, the website just won't give me this combination. I'm trying to phone them but now I'm on hold because this person seemingly can't find this combination either, it's really strange. The two flights exist, it just won't give me this pair as a connection. I just booked them over the phone, she could do them from there, I don't know why it's not available on the internet. She said it was because the, the layover was too long. But there was one available with a longer layover, so that was rubbish. Anyway, that was kind of stressful. <laughs> she didn't understand English totally well. And trying to call a Greek number from here over Skype. Um, not the best connection. Anyway, got them for a really good price. 153 euros, which is, what, 110 pounds, so about 55 pounds each to fly from Heraklion to Athens, then 10 hours there to explore Athens, then Athens to Heathrow. Then we're going to go from Heathrow to Dan's house. Remember Dan from that vlog where we went for the night out in London? Then I'll go home sometime after that. It's five o'clock in the morning, and that's what it looks like outside. I've wondered for a while whether I should wake up early to like film a time-lapse of this. Maybe I'll do that now, but it's not particularly impressive because the sun doesn't rise out there. The reason I'm awake is because I've just had to take a phone call from Aegean Airlines. Those tickets that I booked, I got charged twice what I was expecting. I got told the price was the total price, turns out it was the total price per passenger. M miscommunication, wanted to cancel them, had to go through their formal cancellation procedure. So this lady had to wait for her supervisor to get there in the morning and re-listen to the whole conversation that we had, whatever. She said she'd phone me at 7am. Now I realise she meant 7am in Greece, which is 5am here. That's why I'm awake at 5 o'clock. I'm just having the worst luck with trying to book this holiday for me and Roger to Malia. The flights were cancelled. Um, at my request because I paid double what I was told I was paying but I had to wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning to take that call and deal with it. We booked a hotel but for some reason the card that I used um, as like the deposit thing was declined so they cancelled the booking. So no flights, no hotel, we're back to square one. We've got exams in less than two weeks. Exams are finished in two weeks, two weeks now they'll be done. And in six weeks we want to go on holiday and nothing is sorted yet. I'm so stressed about it. We still don't know where the Swibs is coming. I have supervision work that I'm doing today. I haven't submitted this again. The supervision's tomorrow. I'm just so stressed about exams, so stressed about trying to book this holiday. An emotional wreck at the thought of finishing university. Oxford uh, just tweeted saying, wonder what it's like to apply, study and graduate from Oxford and they say it's all explained in this one infographic. Some nice diagrams cannot tell you what it's like to apply to study and graduate from Oxford or Cambridge or any university for that matter. Some nice pictures just does not tell you what it's really like to be here. You can watch all 80 of my vlogs or however many I've made to get a much better idea about what it's like to study and then graduate from Cambridge. But even then I just I cannot convey truly the the emotional side of all of this. I can show you how busy I am, but I can't convey the stress that I feel. I can show you the fun things that I do, all the great things that happen here, but, but I'm just limited by the what I can put in a video. So for Oxford to say that they can show you what it's like to apply, study and graduate <laughs> in an infographic, no. 
They can tell you some facts about the whole process. They can't show you the experience. 